In this video, I'm going to talk about making open educational resources that you find more usable and making the OERs that you create usable. Open educational resources are free to revise and remix, so there are many problems that can be solved. However, you have to have good source material or else there isn't much you can do. If an image is too tiny, you can't enlarge it without it becoming blurry. If it's a grainy and distorted image, that can't really be corrected. If the sound in your original recording was too quiet and indistinct, you can't boost the volume much without introducing distortions. If it had pops and screeches, they're impossible to remove without compromising the clarity. And bad code for simulations and other complex OERs? Well, you can fix bad code, but it may be such a huge time investment that you'd be better off starting from scratch. If you find OERs with these problems, you're better off waiting for something better. And when you're creating OERs, Make sure they don't have these problems by capturing and saving high quality. Don't feel like you have to use whatever equipment you have on your desk. The college has great equipment available. And don't sacrifice quality for smaller file sizes. You can clip and compress the files later. If you're considering using an open educational resource that needs technical changes, you should get the help of an EdTech. The same thing if you're creating your own OER that is technically demanding. Don't do it yourself. Get an EdTech. You do not need to become a media specialist or programmer. Whether your job is subject area expert or instructional designer, you do not need to add a whole new area of expertise because we already have those experts to help us. EdTechs can help you with choosing devices and setting them up, choosing applications, editing media files, designing and creating web pages, and interactive experiences, and anything like that. An important consideration for usability is making sure that the end user's devices and bandwidth are not overtaxed. We always have to strike a balance between the best case scenario open educational resource that is sophisticated and beautiful, and the OER that our students can actually use with the computers and internet connections that are available to them. Many of our students aren't in a financial situation where they can buy a fast computer or an up-to-date smartphone. Some of our students have to use the uncertain Wi-Fi connections available in public places. Many of our students live in areas that aren't served yet by high-speed internet. And many of our students are late adopters for personal reasons. The open educational resources that we select and create to use in our courses need to work for all of our students, not just the ones with the best gear. That means that our open educational resources should work fine with low bandwidth, whether that means DSL, bad public Wi-Fi, or a weak cell signal. Consider making media available to download as well as stream, and offering a high quality and a low quality option. And ideally, our open educational resources should work equally well on an old desktop, a fancy new laptop, a tiny netbook, a smartphone, or a tablet. Don't make them platform specific. It goes without saying that they should work for Windows, Apple, and just to be thorough for the long run, Linux devices too.